Hi there, this is Valentine and welcome to another Postman tutorial. This time we're gonna take a look at how you can make SOAP requests from Postman. And I'm gonna show you how you can create requests, how you can create assertions and basically API tests for the request that you are working with. So let's get started with a very simple SOAP service. And this one is called Calculator and it offers multiple operations. And we're gonna simply use add to add to integers. And from the documentation, you can see that it's pretty simple what we should send and what we should receive. So I'm gonna start by copy pasting information from this page into Postman. The first thing that I'm gonna copy is the address where I should send a request. And you can see from the documentation, this is a post request that goes to slash calculator.asmx. So I'm gonna paste this address here. I'm gonna select post. And then in order to submit the SOAP body, I'm gonna go to the body part of the request. I'm gonna select raw. And from this drop down, I will select XML. And this will allow us to insert XML in our request. So the next step would be to simply copy and paste the XML that we need to send. Paste it here. And what you'll notice additionally is that Postman automatically adds specific headers for your request. Now, usually application XML, it's something that would work, but in this case, it needs to be text XML. So for that reason, I'm gonna replace that to it text XML. And we still get an error because we haven't really updated our body, so we still need to add our integers. Let's say that we are adding three and four. And the result that we're getting is then seven. Now, one of the common use cases when dealing with request bodies that send information is to have something dynamic in it. And as you can see, currently we have hard coded three and four. And this is something that you generally may want to manipulate by using scripts or using, using other possibilities. And I'm just gonna not go into to scripting when it comes to creating this request, because there are other tutorials explaining that much better. But I'm just going to show you how we can replace three and four with a Postman variable. And I'm gonna go quick and dirty and create two global variables here. I'm gonna call them A and B. And let's give here two specific values, uh, five and six. So now I have this global variables here available. So all I have to do is replace the numbers now with a variable. And I'm using this special syntax with double curly braces. And this will be replaced by Postman when we are sending the request. And now you see that the result has changed. So obviously the information that we inserted here has been then replaced by Postman and uh, real actual values that we wanted to send have been submitted. So this is when it comes to request creation. Now, as you have noticed, we have done everything manually when it comes to creating the request. And if you're familiar with other tools like SOAP UI, you must notice that there is no support for SOAP request and XML generally in Postman. And this is because Postman is more into REST APIs and now more recently into GraphQL. S creating SOAP requests requires a bit of extra work. But if you want to take advantage of other functionality that Postman has, you really need to do this manually in order to create this. So you don't have the possibility of linking or importing a WSDL schema so that you can automatically generate requests and do, do stuff like that. If you already have this request created in a tool like SOAP UI, then you can import those information from there to here. But otherwise, this is, um, this is the manual process you need to go through in order to make everything work. The second part is after the request is working and everything is okay, I'm gonna simply save this to a collection. I'm gonna call the collection calculator. And the request name will be add. And now we can easily have it here in a collection and share it with others. And so this is the way we save things in Postman. 
Now, the second interesting part of Postman is actually the possibility of writing tests for what we have received. So in this case, it's pretty clear that we have added two numbers and we want to make sure that the web service that we are calling here is providing us with the correct result. So for that, I'm going to go here to the test tab and this allows us to basically write JavaScript in order to work with this. And on the right side here, you can open up a few JavaScript snippets. And one of the snippets that are interesting in our case is this one with response body convert XML body to a JSON object. So what this will do is we'll take the raw response and we'll parse it, understanding that this is an XML and we'll map it to a JSON object. It's actually a JavaScript object that will contain all the nested objects that this response had. And I'm gonna show you in a bit how exactly we can write a very simple assertion. So we're gonna assert that add result from this value 11 is actually what we expected this to be. So we're gonna quickly generate the test by using the following snippet. I'm gonna do use it this response body JSON value check. I'm gonna move JSON object right here inside. This will be pretty easy. And we, what we need to do is to navigate property by property and to figure out how to get to this add result. Now this, depending on the response, this isn't, this isn't even a very complex response. This may get complicated and I will show you an alternative to this. But if you, this is something what you want to do, um, you will find here in the notification that I've created another tutorial explaining how you can go step by step. So I'm gonna do this a bit quicker now to avoid the pain of having you watch me do this. Basically, I'm going property by property. So I'm starting with soap envelope and I'm going to soap body, add response, add result. And this will give us the value that's inside add result. And we're gonna check if this matches 11. And now you'll notice that in our test results, you will see here the test name. This is the name of the test. We haven't really properly given something there, but you will see that this has passed. And if I change the value to something else for whatever reason, you will see that you get this assertion error and this is not working anymore. And of course, 11 is now hard coded. Uh, you can use scripts in order to access this variable that I have mentioned here and you will find more resources in this video description on how to work with scripts and so on. So I will not get into that. What I wanted to do is to show you an alternative to using XML to JSON. So I'm going to name this test using XML to JSON and I'm going to copy this exact same test structure that you've seen here. And actually what I'm going to use is Serial. Now, Serial is a JavaScript library. It's actually quite powerful, but it's a bit more complex to use or depending on the scenario, uh, you might find it a bit weird in the beginning. But I assure you it's relatively easy to use and very powerful and avoids you having these long nested objects here that are actually not so nice. So the first thing that we'll do is to initialize Serial and we're gonna define a constant and the constant will be a dollar sign. And this is the usage of dollar sign is simply a convention. And what we need to do is to use serial. And we are gonna load the response body. So our assertion will look something like this. We still can use the dollar sign and this will be a function and we're going to give a parameter to this function and that will be from the response the node that we are looking for and this one is add result and with calling the function text we'll get the value of add result now you will see we have two separate assertions one using serial and the other one using XML to JSON and JSON JavaScript objects. So this one is much shorter and much powerful. We again need to make sure that this one fails as well so that we don't get anything that's 
totally weird here. It's working perfectly. And just to give you a bit more practice with this, uh, let me show you how exactly you can get, for example, add response as a node. So let's create another expectation. And instead of every result, I'm going to use add response as a string. And we're not longer getting the value of it, but we're actually trying to read this attribute. So I'm going to use the attribute function. This will give us the attribute. Now, of course, a test will fail. But as you can see from the assertion, I've managed to extract the right attribute. And now this test is passing as well. So here we go. This is how you can create SOAP request in Postman. If you're having any issues parsing your request body in Postman, then head to mocky.io, select here the content type that's necessary. In this case, you will probably application slash XML or text XML. Paste here the response that you have, click on generate my HTTP response, and in the section below, paste this link that has been generated and I'll do my best to give you a response on how you can parse a specific property from that response to extract a specific value. Now make, when you're using this, this is totally public, so make sure that you remove any sensitive information from the response. So don't share anything that you're not comfortable sharing with others. But I'll be more than happy to help you use Serio or use the XML to JSON uh, way of extracting values from your XML. Now, XML compared to JSON is a bit more complex, but still a lot of people prefer to use Postman in order to have like one tool to work with REST APIs, to work with SOAP requests or to work with GraphQL. So for that reason, I think it's a good way if you manage to gain more information on how you can use Postman for your SOAP requests. Okay, guys, that's about it. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you have learned something new and this has helped you create SOAP requests from Postman and with that tests as well. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel for more tutorials like this. And if you have any questions or if you run into any problems, just check the video description for some resources or leave a comment in the section below. See you at the next tutorial. Bye bye.